Okay, go ahead, guys. Okay. Hi, this is Bryce and Shane's Make Project 2010. Okay. And first, we're going to talk about our project. And it was a smart refrigerator. And what it does, it lets you know when food is low. And the food we chose to do was milk. It's really cheap. It only cost about $10 for us. And the, uh, right here and here, we have our timeline and our carsis. And we'll come back to that. Okay, uh, we started off as um, a pretty much just an idea, and we made some changes after uh, problems or issues that came up in the process. So the first change we made was a pretty small one. Our idea was a scale with a magnet on the bottom, that the magnet would um, complete the circuit on the top picture, see? and. Um, Eventually, we decided to make it easier with micro switches right here. And instead, we made our ma the make project a lot easier and smaller because of having to put the scale in our fr fridge. So, yeah. And another change was that we came from our first idea was trying to build an entire fridge with this, but then our end idea was just having a small machine. And it's over there, if you want to see it. But it's very small, and it's a, it was a lot faster and cheaper to build, and that's why we chose to make that change. OK, so in this process, we had many challenges, unfortunately. Um, they, we had four big ones. So one was connectivity. While making the circuit, we had lots of troubles with the LED to light up and turn off when the button was pressed down. Since we could have solder connections together in school, we tried to use half root. We soon learned that it would ruin the circuit and we had to start over several times. We overcame this problem by using duct tape instead of glue. See, what the duct tape would do is get inside the um, wire and it would um, disconnect the circuit. So, the springs. Also, you may not seem like a real problem. It cost us several days of class though. We needed four strings to support the top piece, this top piece of wood. And um, the springs we brought were misplaced, so we could not find them. And finally, we got new springs, and we had to cut them, but it was very difficult. So. And then two more challenges that we had was we had a problem getting plywood uh, because we couldn't, we didn't have time after school to go get it. And it was hard to find the right thickness and size that we wanted. And so one day when we tried to get it, the store was closed, so we couldn't get it that day. And then once we got it, we also had to take it home to cut it into the right size we needed for our machine. The other problem was the switches that we had as the button. Um, the switches that we had, they were either too easy to press down or too hard to press down. So we had to take time to find the right kind of switches that we needed. But we found um, we found the right kind that we needed, but we couldn't figure out how to get them to work because they had four little wires coming out of the bottom, and we couldn't figure out which ones we needed to put into the circuit, which two. And so we had to research that, and that took up more time that we had to waste. Yeah. The success. Once it tests, what? was that we had was the wood idea. Since our switch was hard to press down, we needed to enlarge the pressure area. Our idea of wood and springs worked perfectly. We chose this because the, poten the poten potential problem was a glue. Another success that we had was the resistor that wired into the circuit. It made the LED a lot more noticeable since it was flashing. We chose this because it made the project more functional. And the next success that we had was our idea of using a battery pack instead of just one battery. And this is important because it helps the LED stay on for longer. And also we have an on and off switch. So when we're not working on it, we could turn off the switch and that would help save our battery power. And this was a good idea because one battery wouldn't have a switch and it would wear out very quickly because the LED would have to be on all the time. And the last success that we had was our idea of using an LED because first we were
were going to have record a recorded message play when the milk was low, but that was really hard and people might not be able to hear it if they were in another part of the house. So we decided to use an LED that was very bright and people could notice. Yeah. Looking back, we would have chosen this project again if we had the choice. We say this pro this because we even thought the project was pretty difficult to complete, to complete. And some of the parts weren't that fun to make the world. Overall, the pro the pro it was a fun project and it taught us a lot about circuits, woodworking, and woodworking. One of the things that we would have done differently would be to have to solder instead of duct tape and seal the connections. We would say that we did enough information and research to continue the actual project because, because there was very little research involved with the project. One thing we one thing we could have done would have been to see anyone that had built something like this and to see the if they or anyone else had suggestions. Um, the most enjoyable part of the project was when we actually finished it and saw it work because we had lots of problems and it was really hard to do and that was the most enjoyable moment of the project for us. And for our documentation, we would say that it was fair. We included pictures and one video on maybe around half of our documentations. And we could have made it better by adding more writing and more pictures. But one thing we did to make our documentation better was to make an instructable on how to build uh, something like we did. And that made our documentation a lot better because people could go through and see the steps that we took to build our device. That's it. Okay, so do you want to turn the lights on so you can video the... Um, yeah. Hey, good job, guys. Turn off, turn off. Oh.